Information Center and your local weather office for the latest information. Well, we're continuing to watch our two systems in the Atlantic, Invis 91L in the Gulf of Mexico, and new tropical storm Gonzalo in the Central Atlantic that has been strengthening today. We also have stuff going on in the Pacific where Hurricane Douglas has formed and is going to move into the Central Pacific where the Hawaiian Islands exist, and we may have to talk about this soon as well. I'm just going to briefly show this forecast from the NHC showing uh, Douglas moving toward the Hawaiian Islands within four to five days. Uh, the good news about this forecast in terms of intensity and potential impacts to the islands is uh, there's a fairly uh, guaranteed restraint on the storm that will cause it to decay a bit on approach to the islands, and that's the fact that there's colder water here that Douglas will have to pass over. This patch of green color here, cooler than 26 Celsius water, will limit the intensity of the storm considerably on approach to Hawaii, but it could still be a bonafide tropical storm by the time it makes it to the region. So I'm not going to talk too much about this today, but as we get closer to this and it's still forecast to be close to the islands, we may spend some more time on this uh, later. All right, back to the Atlantic. We're going to talk about Gonzalo first, and this you can see how small this is, first of all, just looking at this big picture. It's a very tiny blob here out in the Atlantic, and that's an important observation all by itself, just because small storms like Gonzalo are harder to predict in general. They're more fragile, but they can also intensify quicker. Uh, than you expect, and it can be difficult to pin down just how strong they're going to be when they approach land masses like the Lesser Antilles here. So if you're in the island chain, keep an eye on this over the next few days as there is some inherent uncertainty and things can change in short notice, so make sure you're keeping an eye on the forecast over the next few days. <clears throat> if we take a closer look at Gonzalo today, uh, before the sun goes down here, uh, when that uh, comes sweeping through at the end of the loop. That's where the sun is setting. And uh, we don't see uh, a lot of spiral bands today, much more blobular in uh, shape uh, this evening. We had more spiral bands this morning on the north and west side, but those have since evaporated due to the dry air that is lurking off to the north and west and uh, has caused the outer part of the storm to remain rather convectively anemic. And this is also helping Gonzalo to stay tiny. Um, dry environments do not facilitate large storms. But what we have seen is a pretty nice little inner core beginning to develop. And before the sun goes down here, you might be able to make out some of the curliness to some of the texture winding into the center of uh, Gonzalo uh, over the last few hours. Uh, this is the beginning stages of Gonzalo trying to form at least a partial eye wall, and we don't have an eye yet or anything that really is clearing out in the center on satellite imagery, but we do have the makings of the core structure that could allow Gonzalo to intensify to the next level and perhaps achieve hurricane status on its way westward. Here's the latest microwave pass, kind of showing that structure as of about 4.30 Eastern time. We had more of a big wrapped band look this morning in earlier passes. Now it looks like a big blob. The center is here on the western side of that blob, and this is a little bit of a, a low resolution pass, but there is a little bit of curvature to the uh, left-hand side of this convection. So this is essentially the first third or so of an eye wall that is trying to form, but you can see the west western side, not a lot of deep convection here. Again, there is dry air getting imported from this side, and that is going to be what primarily tries to limit Gonzalo going forward, and we do expect that there may be some bursts of intensification and then slight weakening and then intensification again as we go forward because from time to time that dry air will get in, choke the convection, and force it to regenerate um, as the core continues to take in some breaths of dry air once in a while. And because of Gonzalo's size, it's also difficult to use some of our typical computer models for forecasting this. For example, the European model does see Gonzalo at the beginning of the run from this morning, but it very quickly dies on the model and becomes an open wave before making it to the Lesser Antilles on Saturday. This is looking less and less likely as time goes on, considering that Gonzalo has become an established moderate strength tropical storm with max winds estimated at about 50 miles per hour right now. 
and higher resolution guidance such as the H-Wharf has shown Gonzalo surviving at least until the islands. And considering that the storm is so small, uh, we're probably thinking this is less likely right now. The global models may be having trouble resolving Gonzalo and showing its survival until it reaches the islands. So we're going to expect this to survive and remain a storm on approach. The GFS is starting to see this a little bit better if we uh, look at the run here from 18z we do see it resolving gonzalo better than it has during the last few runs and it does show some intensification this pressure number here in red is lowering over time and this is something getting close to hurricane intensity on the model maybe a, a strong tropical storm here and it ends up just east or northeast of barbados on Saturday afternoon and if we look at where the model has been over the last few days the last few runs all valid Saturday afternoon had the storm weaker and farther southwest and if you go a couple of runs farther back <clears throat> we get into the part where the GFS was not showing Gonzalo surviving at all so the model correction here has been toward a stronger storm and naturally a slightly slower storm and a little bit farther north because a stronger storm is deeper extends higher up into the atmosphere and feels the less brisk westerly flow in the upper atmosphere and that kind of slows it down a little bit um, and it moves less quickly to the west when it's stronger and it also comes north a little bit so again even if you're north of the windward islands and you're say up here in Martinique or Guadeloupe, you know, keep an eye on this just in case it uh, is strong enough to start sliding far enough north to bring some impacts to the more northern part of the island chain. It's not guaranteed to just ride by very far south like this, depending on how strong it gets. Uh, the H wharf is similar <clears throat> to the GFS. This is the model that has been doing a pretty good job at resolving Gonzalo's intensity, and it does show. Um, spits and spurts of intensification getting Gonzalo to hurricane intensity by Friday and then as it comes toward the islands we see it kind of maintaining that kind of intensity not not getting much past cat one strength here and that kind of makes sense based on the dry air that it's fighting and the fact that by this time it will be moving a little bit more quicker toward the west and that can cause the storm some problems when it's tiny like this uh, and that can can make it struggle to maintain an upright and robust vortex we can see that sal surge to its north, big burst of mid-level easterly flow south of this bubble of African air to its north. Uh, but again, the h wharf is a little bit slower than some models that keep Gonzalo weaker, like the European. And now the GFS is beginning to catch on to the slightly slower motion as well. And so you can kind of see this lifting toward the north, again, perhaps getting a little farther up the island chain if it's stronger, um, perhaps even north of Barbados. Um, as this uh, gets gets in there on now Saturday night or very early Sunday morning on the H wharf as opposed to during the day Saturday so perhaps moving the timeline a little bit later uh, we can see what uh, the storm will deal with once it gets in the Caribbean uh, let me just go back here once it gets into the Caribbean the question is does this survive beyond the islands and we can see some weakening occurring on the H wharf and that's again in part due to this south surge causing a very strong east or northeast flow in the mid levels and there will be some shear here as a part of the vortex will be getting tugged toward the northwest and the other part the low level part will be tugged mostly due west and we can kind of see this on the vortex sounding from day five when this is in the middle of the Caribbean showing the steering flow here uh, out of the due east in the lower troposphere but then we have a much lighter flow in the mid troposphere so there is some shear that will causing will cause the vortex to struggle which again is not atypical for the Caribbean at this time of year and uh, once this gets to the islands we'll have a better idea of its long-term prospects um, but right now we do expect to at least have a storm enter the Caribbean perhaps even near hurricane intensity the hurricane center does now have this achieving hurricane intensity during uh, Thursday or Friday and so this could be a significant uh, system for the Windward Islands and again potentially even more toward the north side of this cone if the storm is indeed near hurricane intensity don't write it off in Barbados or the islands on the north side of this cone as we could see this track shift north um, if the storm uh, maintains a significant intensity over the next few days and again beyond a lot of questions to be answered we'll see how this looks near the islands before we know much about what happens after this enters the Caribbean but of course down the road we may be watching for potential rain and flooding impacts in the greater Antilles if this slides north so stay tuned
Okay, we're going to switch gears now. That was Gonzalo, and we still have a few days to watch that before it makes it to the islands. Uh, but we also have something a little closer to the United States in the Gulf of Mexico. This is Invest 91L, and if we take a closer look at that system, this has continued to gradually gain organization perhaps a little bit more than models have expected. And we talked yesterday about how this is not something you necessarily want to sleep on. Uh, when it has this much time over the Gulf water. And what we've seen all day today is some pretty persistent low-level westerly flow uh, north of the Yucatan Peninsula. And we can clearly see the rotation happening now in the lower levels beneath these clouds. And uh, the low-level center is right in here. We have some thunderstorms trying to form this evening on the north side of that center, but in general, we've had very intermittent convection. Um, but we do see that this low-level center that's rotating now is finding itself within a little bit more of the moisture field to its east. Remember, this was sort of tilted over yesterday where you can see the exposed circulation in all of the high-level clouds and rain was off to the east. That is no longer completely true today, as we do have some rain and storms over the center itself. So this is an improvement in terms of the system's organization. However, the circulation does remain broad and weak. We have a plane in there investigating right now, and I can just refresh that there, and you can see them finding the low-level center where we have west winds to the south, east winds to the north, uh, but this is very loose, very weak, and very light flow here, not very strong winds at all. So this has a long way to go before it can really start intensifying. However, it does have a lot of time to work with, perhaps about three days of it, over the Gulf. And if we look at the water vapor satellite imagery, we see a very nice environment for it aloft. This upper level low is now backing westward away from it, and we have this very nice expansive bubble of cirrus outflow going on on all sides of the circulation. Shear, not really an issue for this one. <clears throat> the only thing really impeding 91L at this point seems to be the thermodynamic environment. Now, the the ocean water in the Gulf is quite warm, and the air above the water is not particularly dry, but the way sometimes TC development works is that the atmosphere needs to be preconditioned. It needs the temperature profile to be a certain way, a little more close, uh, closer to moist neutral um, in order for convection to persist in the fashion that's necessary to help spin up a circulation. In its current state, a lot of these thunderstorms are going up and then collapsing in downdrafts. And those downdrafts can prevent the storm from developing immediately. But over time, these bursts of storms continue to fire and continue to collapse and continue to refire, eventually warming and moistening the atmosphere in the mid-levels further. And once it gets to a certain point, it can sustain deeper, more persistent convection that can lead to a bona fide tropical storm forming. That process can take some time, but this uh, system does have a bit of time, about three days to get to the Texas coast, which is what is expected on the models. And uh, here on the GFS, just to take a look, this is the mid-level uh, moisture forecast and the surface pressure in black. So there's our low center and our moisture field in green and mid-level wind in the barbs here, so you can see the mid-level wave axis. And this comes northwest, and the GFS remains really not a fan of this, uh, showing a very broad surface low, but not much development through Friday morning. And because it's weak, it moves a little faster. And by Friday evening, uh, it's moving toward the Texas coastline here as still an open wave. And this would bring rain, but of course, no real wind threats or anything else. The Euro, though, has tended a little bit stronger with this over the last run or two, showing a broad uh, low that gradually gets stronger as it moves toward the Texas coast, takes a little bit of a left turn here at the end, and then becomes uh, a bit stronger right at landfall, where it seems like the atmosphere is finally preconditioned enough to allow it to tighten up and intensify, and this would be a bona fide tropical storm at the end of this particular model run, and some of its ensemble members also show uh, some sort of tropical storm developing right before landfall. And it is a little slower on the Euro. By Saturday morning, it's still offshore and very slow 24 hours later, only barely onshore on Sunday morning. And so sort of the concern here is that if this slows down right when it's finally starting to develop before it reaches the coast, we could see perhaps some quick development. But not all, mo not all models show development, uh, so that remains a little bit of a question mark. I wouldn't trust it though, and I wouldn't sleep on this one, uh, given that it has been a little bit better to find today, perhaps more so than some models like the GFS expected. So if I were to bias correct these forecasts, I would lean toward a greater chance of this developing, and I would say that it's more likely 
um, that this does become a tropical storm before reaching Texas than anything else. Uh, whether it has enough time to develop significant wind, uh, we'll have to see. Right now it's going to take a lot of time for it to really get going, but it does have at least three days over water, and that's more than enough time for stuff to happen in the tropics. So keep an eye on this if you're in the northwest Gulf Coast region. Uh, at the very least, we will expect a period of rain from anywhere from South Texas to perhaps portions of Louisiana. Uh, the exact track of this, don't focus too much yet. Uh, with a broad system like this, we have to wait for it to kind of focus and tighten up before we can know the details of exactly which part of the Texas coastline. Um, but right now, the consensus is some sort of west-northwest track with maybe a little bit of a left bend at the end, but exactly where along here. Not exactly sure yet. Just be ready for the possibility of a tropical storm developing and approaching the Texas coastline as we head into the weekend. And keep an eye on the National Hurricane Center forecast for the latest. Uh, that's it for tonight for me. Thanks for watching.